Okay guys, let's take a look at leak code 1434, number of ways to wear different hats to each other. So this is going to be a problem that utilizes a bunch of different techniques such as bitmask, um, 01 knapsack slash subsets, kind of recursive stuff, and also DFS memoization. So let's uh, take a look at um, the question and then see how to approach it. So we're told that we have n people and there's at most 40 different hats, 1 through 40. So given this list, what this list represents is this first array is person 0. Person 0 only likes hats 3 and 4, so you have to assign either hat 3 or hat 4 to this person 0. Person 1 only likes hats 4 and 5, so he has to be given either hat 4 or hat 5. And person 2 only likes hat 5. So you want to see how many different ways are there to create a valid you know assignment um, pairing f uh, path I guess you know how many different ways are there to you know assign the hats um, so that everybody's happy and nobody is getting a duplicate hat um, or vice versa like no hat um, is being assigned to two different people right um, each person must have their own hat and nobody can have the same hat as another person right so basically the only way to do that is really to just explore all the different options right we can try assigning hat three to this person and then we'll go to the next person and give them hat four or five and then we go to the last person and give them hat five right so basically we're just going to sweep through the people um, and then try assigning any all of these uh, um, hats to that person as long as the hat hasn't been used yet. And so that's where the bit mask comes in. The bit mask is used to track which hats have already been selected in that current uh, you know, path. So let's first see something that we're gonna have to do before we start doing the you know, main DFS bit mask. Um, and that's that we have to realize that the number of people n is only gonna be as large as 10, whereas the number of hats is possibly going to grow to 40. There could be as many as 40 hats, but there's only ever going to be as many as 10 people. So let's see why that matters. Okay, so let's go in and so what was the first example? So the first example was 344555 three, four, four, five, five. Is that what it was? 344455. Four, five. Yep. Okay, so person 0 only likes these two, person one only likes these two, person two only likes this one, right? So in the worst case though, they said that there's 40 hats. So this could grow to all the way to 40, right? There could be 40 values. There could be four, this person zero could like all 40 hats, right? So it, in the worst case, right, that person likes all 40 hats. So then we have to go through and iterate through all 40 of these 40 different hats, right? Person one could like, you know, also could like all 40 hats. And then, you know, then this person has to look at 39 different hats, right? You know, excluding the one that person zero chose, right? And then person two would have to look at a possible total of 38 hats, right? So this can grow to 40 factorial, right? 40 times 39 times 38. This is a 40 factorial, right? Whereas if we reverse the logic and we say that um, we're going to make it so that each hat, hat zero, hat one, hat two, this hat has persons zero all the way till 10, right? There can be at most 10 people. So at most in this list, there will be 10 values. Hat one can only have as many as 10 values. Hat two can have as many as 10 values, right? So then this is way less. This is 10 times nine times eight. So this is 10 factorial. So that's the that's what we have to do. We have to transform this data and you know create a new mapping. So basically we have to go in and have a new map which has the key equal to the hat number and then we have the value equal to the people liking that hat okay so that's the first thing we have to realize right if you do it the original way then your time limit exceed that's what i tried to do the first time it got tle so let's see so using this new logic we have you know hat one hat two and then we have the people blah 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 blah, blah up till 10 up till 10 you know, all 10 people like hat one, all 10 people like hat two. So <clears throat> where does the bit mask come in? I already explained how to do the bit mask in the last video, but I'll do a quick recap so that, you know, you don't 
you can watch this video independently of the other video and still kind of have a good understanding of BitMask. So the BitMask will keep track of which, um, which, which people have already been used, right? So if this hat one, if we choose to use, you know, person five or something, or let's use three. If we use person three, um, if we select or assign person three to have one, then in our bitmask, what should be reflected is a new string of um, zero, one, two, three. So then this value, so so this bitmask is called a bitmask because this is a binary bit representation. So then we'll mark this third index as a one, meaning that this third person was used slash assigned. Um, you know, so I guess if 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 maybe the second person was used, then um, if the second person was used, then this index would be uh, a one, right? So that's kind of the idea behind the bit mask. You'll just mark that index as one if that person was used. So let's say we went to per we let's say we were iterating through. We chose three for the first. Um, hat we, we assigned person three to hat one and then we moved over to hat two and now we have all the selections from zero to ten again um, how do we know which selection was which selections are available and which selections are um, already used well we we're, we're gonna pass through this binary string to this next iteration to this next recursive call right and you know one way you could do it is you could iterate through each digit in this binary string but that wouldn't be very efficient. What you can do is you can use the ampersand to check if the the current number that you want to. So basically, in this hat two list, we're gonna want to. You know, we're gonna iterate through from zero to ten, and we're going to see. Uh, you know, we're gonna check if each number has already been used in that current uh, previous by by a previous worker or something, right? Um, so we'll you know, let's say we wanted to check if two was already um, if person two was already assigned to a different hat how would we check that so the binary representation of person two looks like this right like I said this second index is marked with a one saying that we want to use this one so we will and together these two binary strings and what happens when you and one zero 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 one zero zero when you and zero and one you get zero 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 so if your resulting anded binary string, if you and together these two and it becomes zero, that means that there was no overlap and that means that this person two was not used yet. So you can go ahead and process this person. In the case that you're trying to look at person three, you know, person three's binary representation would look like this. So if you anded together these two, right, what would happen? you would have a one in this place here. So this is not zero anymore. So that means that there was an overlap and you can't process person three. So this, this bit mask will keep track of which people were already used um, by a different hat. So uh, that's kind of how we'll uh, check that. So using an ampersand, right? The ampersand is the bitwise and. So let's say we wanted to, so we found that uh, person two was not used yet person two is not used yet so we're going to uh, want to process person two you know we're gonna do a DFS we're gonna assign person two to this uh, to hat two we're gonna assign person two to this hat right and then we're gonna keep going to the next iteration so so how do we update our bit mask how do we update our bit mask to reflect that we've just you know used person two well it's pretty simple using these two strings right we'll just um, we'll or them this time. We'll use an or, a pipe. So when you or 1000 zero, zero, zero with 0100, zero, 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 the or is 1100. Zero, zero. So now you can pass along this new binary string to the next iteration, right? So we can pass that along to the next iteration. So 1100. Zero, zero. So now we can say that we've used both person 3 and person 2. Okay? So that's how the bit mask works. So on top of the bit mask, what else do we have to consider? What what else do we have to consider in this problem? So just doing that is not enough. We have to take into consideration one more thing. So let's go back to the problem and let me show you another example. So let's look at example two, right? 
So three five one three five three five one three five. Okay, I'm drawing this out on my whiteboard here. Let me switch back. So it says there's four possible ways to choose hats, right? Four possible ways. All right, so let's take a look at this whiteboard. So let's say this this was person zero and person one. Um, right, so if we were to assign person, uh, if we were to assign hat three to, or sorry, sorry, let me rewrite the, let me rewrite this in the new format, right? We have hat zero, or sorry, hat one, or no, no, what do we have? We have hat one, yeah, hat one, hat three, and hat five. So hat one was liked by person zero, hat three was liked by zero and one, and hat five was also liked by zero and one, right? So if we were to blindly always just, you know, try to assign this hat to the first person, then hat one would always be assigned to person one or person zero, right? But also hat three and hat five also, you know, can be assigned to person zero. But these two options are, are gonna be closed once we assigned once we assign um, hat one to person zero. So what's one way we can avoid this? And right, right, so if we had hat one assigned to person zero, then you know you can only have hat three as um, person person one um, and then hat five as person one right um, right so how do we how do we make sure we open up all the possibilities right we want to have the we want to have a combination where hat three is paired to person zero and then hat five is paired to person one or hat three is paired to person one hat five is paired to person zero Right, but that's not going to be possible if we always just assign, you know, if we always use hat one and give it to person zero. So what we have to do is actually do a zero slash one knapsack slash technique, basically where we take slash don't take. That means, um, or or sorry, like use slash don't use. That's a better way to put it. Use slash don't use. Right. So that means. We can actually sometimes just skip this. We don't actually necessarily have to use hat one in our combinations, right? We can just skip this whole thing and just go to the next iteration and, you know, let hat three take person zero, be assigned to person zero, right? Or, or in the other case, we could just have, you know, or maybe we could use hat one as zero, but then skip. We could skip this one. We could skip this one and use only hat one and hat five, right? So you can see that we'll have to implement some sort of use slash don't use technique um, in order to make sure we're covering all the different possible cases of hat assignment pairings. Okay, so let's take a quick look at the code and to, to you know wrap everything up. Okay, so the first thing that happens is we have to create a new mapping, right? Like I said, we have to map the we have to map the the hat to the different people that like that hat. So that's kind of what's happening here. And then we have to turn it into a list so we can uh, iterate through and sweep through that list of keys, um, you know, tuples, key value pairs. And then we'll create a, um, um, oh right, so I forgot to mention that one way to know that we've used all the people. So once we reach the end here, how do we know that we've used both person one and per person zero and person one, right? Right. There's only two. There's only two people in this uh, scenario, right? And if we used both people, our binary string would look like this, right? One one. At person zero was used and person one was used, right? Our binary string would look like one one. So how? What's a what's a quick and dirty way to represent this one one? Um, like like basically the what I'm saying is you'll need to check if your mask is equal to this binary string at the end to make sure that you've used all the different people, right? Because like I said, we could either take or don't take. So we could actually we could actually not take all of these and then we'd reach the end and our mask would look like a zero, 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 right? So we want to make sure we've successfully paired everyone at the end. And when everyone is successfully paired, then there'd be a one in every single um, column or index for this bit mask, right? So since there's two people, what we can do is we can do a one left shifted by two, right? So what is one left shifted by two? That's 
one left shifted by two, that becomes zero, one, zero, zero. And then if we minus one from that, then we'll get zero, um, one, one, zero, right? So you kind of just scrape off the zeros, right? So this is your new binary string. So you do one, shift, shift, two, left shift, two, and then minus one, right? So the number of people, this is the number of people, and then you minus one from it, and you'll get this binary string that has all ones. Right? If people was four, then you do one left shift shift four and it would look like one, one, two, four. It would look like this, right? And then you minus one and it would become um, zero, one, 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 right? So that, this is your, at the end, your base case is you're checking if your mask is equal to this, you know, all used, all used up uh, binary string. Okay, so that's what uh, this piece of the code is doing. And then we're going to call the DFS with a zero index and a zero mask. Um, oh yeah, also the other base case is once you reach the end of the, um, the new mappings, you know, the mappings that we created of the hat to the people that like the hat, once you reach the end of this, then you should also break out. Otherwise, you'll just keep recursing indefinitely. So here is the don't take logic, right? If we are not going to use this hat, then you just update the index to the next hat, and then you will keep the mask the same. And this is the logic for when you do decide to take a hat. Um, you're going to go through all the people in that current hat and see um, which person was not used yet. If the person was already used, then you'll just continue to the next iteration, to the next person in that list of people, right? Like I said, the ampersand is what, what you know, determines you, you ampersand the mask with the one left shifted by person. Um, right, so going back, I kind of uh, skipped over that, but basically, um, the one left shifted by person is just, you know, let's say you wanted to check if person two was in this mask. Let's say the mask is equal to zero, one, zero, zero, and you, you want to see if person two was in this mask. One left shifted by two will give you right it will give you this it will give you zero one zero zero so then you ampersand these two values and um, check if they're um, check if they give you a zero or not right if it gives you something other than zero then you need to continue if it gives you a zero then you can try you can assign that person so by assigning we're going to insert that um, we're going to insert it into the mask with a or and then we'll just call it DFS and we'll update our total number temp. Temp is always going to just return the total number of um, uh, uh, valid pairings, right? So at each, uh, basically when it hits this base case, when the mask is equal to the all used up mask, then you'll return a one. And basically all that stuff will just bubble back up. Um, you know, it'll all bubble back up and then you'll eventually get your answer here for temp and then you'll return this and it'll keep bubbling up so you also need to mod it right and i also use the cache the built-in cache in python which is just going to take all the combinations of index slash mask and you know cache it away in some dictionary um, all right so hopefully you guys learned something new in this video i tried my best to keep it short it's already really long, but yeah, if you have any feedback, please let me know. If you want me to answer any specific questions, please let me know. And thanks for watching.